Well, at least the episode was short. Greetings and welcome once again to Roman of the Empire. I am your host, Roman, and today we are going to be reviewing She-Hulk Episode 2, Superhuman Law. So, same cast as last week for the most part. We did get uh, the addition of Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky. And I'm not going to go into all the other stuff. Same uh, Cat Corio as director and Jessica Gao as the writer. So, there's a lot of whining in She-Hulk. A lot. In fact, nearly everything Jennifer Walters does involves whining. This episode is focused more on the law comedy side of the house. And as I said last time, even if we take the superhero elements out and the man bashing, of which there was almost none in this episode, so thank you for that. Uh, if you take all that out of the show, what you're still left with is a largely uninteresting program because the writing is just not very good. Uh, you've seen legal comedies before and you've seen them done well, and this is not that. So that's it. We're going to go into plot summary and all the other blah, 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 blah stuff now. So spoilers, yay. Um, so after Jen went all Hulk and beat um, Titania, that's the female villain character thing in the last episode, um, she gets fired by her boss, uh, the district attorney, because she is now seen as a liability. So the firm they were up against was Goodman, Lieber, Kurtzman, and Holloway. And that's, remember that long thing, K, uh, uh, G, L, K, and H, for later down the road. <sighs> so the DA doesn't want her because she's a liability. And you kind of get that um, ish. I mean, it's a plot device and you need it to happen. So they don't want that kind of focus being placed on the DA's office every time she goes up for a case. It doesn't make sense. So the scene in which she's fired is pretty, is pretty cringy, though. Uh, she walks into a bar, and all the patrons are chanting, She-Hulk, 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 like she did some amazing thing. She, she did save some folks in a courtroom. But on, on your superhero scale, which the people of the world now have seen, you know, the, 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 what superheroes are, they exist, and all the, the, the wonders that they do, this is pretty minor. Um, but they're, the, the, everybody in the bar is acting like she performed some Avengers-level event. Fine. Whatever. So now Jen goes on the hunt for a job because she's unemployed. And we get a montage of her getting turned down by every law firm in the land for the same reason the DA fired her. They don't want that kind of liability and, and they're attached to their firm. Okay, got it. Um, so she whines to her assistant, Nikki, um, that being a superhero is for narcissists, billionaires, and oddly adult orphans. Ah, the comedy. Anyway, so we do get to meet her family. They're kind of a normal collection of goofy aunt and uncle, her cousin who's getting hired on as the Best Buy manager or something. And her mom gives her phone numbers to strangers, which is weird. But her dad, to the credit of the show, so I'm giving credit where credit is due, is um, a decent guy who cares about his kid, and they actually wrote him as such. So that was, thank you for that. Uh, so Walters is offered a job uh, by Holden Holloway of K, 
G, L, K, and H, which is kind of a mouthful, but the, that, the law firm she uh, was up against in court in the first episode and would have defeated, but they had to declare a mistrial because she went Hulk. She, they, he wants her to be the new head of their superhero law division, or superhuman law division, I'm sorry. So she accepts on the condition that she can hire her annoying friend, Nikki. Terrific. I hate Nikki. I do. I hate her so much. She, she is every level of annoying to me. There is nothing about her I don't find annoying. But that's neither here nor there. On her first day at the firm, uh, Jen realizes, or learns that Holloway wants her to be She-Hulk all the time. Um, that's why he brought her on board. And then she whines that her colleagues will think this is the only reason he hired her. Now, where have we heard that kind of thing before? Huh. Strange, strange. When, in fact, it is the only reason he hired her. Uh, and then she, walking through the firm, there's a little bit of cringe in that. Um, you know, you're getting her mental break the fourth wall uh, dialogue. Uh, she walks past a room full of all white men who are laughing and shaking hands around a table. And she's like, these bozos never had to go through anything like this. Um, her first case is to represent Emil Blonsky. He is going to be appealing so he can get paroled. And of course, Emil Blonsky, as you'll remember, most notably from uh, the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, one of the Hulks. The Incredible Hulk? There are like, there was the Hulk movies, the only, the, the one with Ed Norton was good, the other one was not. Um, he, he, remember, he was a, he's a, Russian raised in England, uh, working for the British military who was on loan to the U.S. But anyway, he became the abomination. He got the treatment. It didn't go quite the same way that it did with Bruce. Uh, and he gets, he becomes the abomination, you know, out of control monster. Um, so he's up for parole. And no, no. Jen does feel there's a conflict here because, you know, he did try to kill her cousin. And so Blonsky signed a, a no conflict waiver type thing. So we, she goes into the prison and this scene was actually mildly interesting. Uh, and it was nice to see Tim Roth again because I like Tim Roth a great deal. Um, but I am hoping, and so he's in human form. He's doing haiku. Um... He has seven soul mates somewhere in the world. He's adopted some kind of some Eastern type philosophy things, but he's in human form. And I found this kind of weird because when did Blonsky get the ability to do that? When did the abomination get the ability to transform at will? Hmm. So anyway, I'm hoping that this is, is, this is all a ruse from Blonsky and this isn't just a dismantling of another male character. So we'll, we'll see. So she meets him and she, she's like, oh, okay, because he gives her, well, the government hired me and they gave me the, the serum and I thought I was one of the good guys. So she, she buys it um, and agrees to take the case. So she calls Bruce to let him know um, that she's going to represent Blonsky. Bruce is like, yeah, it's fine, whatever, because whatever. That's the smart Hulk for you. Um, everybody is so freaking weak in this. It just it hurts my soul. So he's on some Sicarian spaceship on his way to do something that no one actually cares about. Walters calls Holloway to accept the case. Um, he's and he's like, oh great! By the way, turn on the news. And now there's a report about Blonsky escaping from prison to participate in underground fights. And where have we seen that? Of course, that was in the Ten Rings. And we know that Wong is able to transport him. So escape, eh. But they don't know any of this. And I think that's going to be pretty hard to explain away in uh, the parole process. But whatever, I guess we'll see. Because she's a brilliant lawyer, as well as being a she-hulk. And that's it. Uh, it ends with the newsreel. 
And I was surprised when the credits started rolling because I went at the beginning when I said it was short, I wasn't joking. It's like 20 minutes uh, and some change. And then we get an end credit scene where she's helping her dad and she Hulk form do various tasks around the house because she's she's big and strong and tall. <laughs> Terrific. This one was was a lot less cringe than the last one. And I am grateful for that. Um, but it's still not a good show. Uh, it's not it's not worth your valuable time. You should be watching pretty much anything else that's out there unless of course it's on disney plus so anyway that's it for now this has been roman of the empire please like and subscribe it really does help the channel out um signing off be kind <laughs>